Yes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're going to get some great credit information. Probably you're going to get like a fire hose at you right now because she has so much great information to share with you. So to Miss Nikki, go ahead and take over and do your thing. And if you don't have what you need, let me know. I'm right here. Okay. Thank you. Great, great training, y'all. Thank y'all for having me again. Um, always a pleasure to be on this call with you guys. So I'm going to share the My Credit System. And I just have to say this, that Tuesday night, if you were not on the uh -huh. Tuesday night call, yep. if you were not on the Tuesday night call with June Collier, the man, the creator of the My Credit System, you missed a treat. When I say y'all, make sure that every team member on this call and everybody in your downline does not miss another Tuesday night call. The online marketing um, is every Tuesday, but every two weeks he will dive deeper into the My Credit system or just, I'm gonna say credit, because June is giving nuggets beyond the My Credit system. And that was an amazing call. I was shocked that the whole company was not on that call, but it was at least, I believe, I think it got up to 200 or 180 people. So make sure that y'all are um, on that Tuesday night call because June Carrier, our marketing director, who created this My Credit System, who dropped some amazing nuggets. And then My Credit System will be getting an upgrade. I'm not going to say it's going to be better, but he's going to be adding some new things that they want people to learn with the credit repair, okay? So this is the My Credit System, you guys. So anyone that's new on the call, I'm not for sure. Anybody that's new um, that joined the team. But whenever I meet someone and they ask me about credit repair, my goal is to get them to do the DIY. As much as I do do people credit, I do understand everybody is not worth having a, as a client. So I love doing credit, but it could be a headache. So I try to tell people, and I love the fact that our co-founders are big on educating the credit system instead of trying to make people credit repair people or specialists, because it, it, it can be a headache. And some jobs or some people are not worth having as clients. Um, so you have a jewel here and a blessing that we can just take people to a system that will educate them to do it themselves. And it's under 25 minutes. I try to let people know that because people are like, they so busy. Like, I don't have time, Tanika, I don't have time. I've never seen so many broke people that don't have time. Because my model is you can't be broke and busy. Now, you can't afford to pay $500 plus dollars or $300 plus dollars or whatever. Even if you tell a person $200, they look at you like you got five heads. It is very expensive to do somebody's credit because it's your time, your effort, the ink, the postage, all of that costs. So again, I tell people it's under 25 minutes. You do not have to be in front of your computer all day. Our videos, I tell them all the videos are under six minutes. And you're going to have knowledge that you can have for a lifetime. So when you talk to someone and you just let them see the power of them doing it themselves, and they can use it if they need to do their children's credit, if they need to do their friend's credit, however, they can use this software. Then people will be more open to, okay, let me try it. Let me try it out. Cause that's the whole goal for us, you guys. We want to empower people and educate them with having it, them doing it themselves and just having the knowledge. Okay. So again, like I say, it's under 30, about 25 minutes. That is something I point out. I also like to point out that everything they need is in one place. They would never have to Google or YouTube anything. Okay. We teach them how to pull their credit report. We go to one of the most reliable sources, which is the annualcreditreport.com, okay? I let people know you can go here once a week. So there's no reason for someone to say they don't know what's on their credit. Um, I haven't looked at my credit in over a year. Well, maybe you thought that, you know, before COVID, they only allowed you to pull it once a year. But since COVID, they are allowing people to go up here weekly. I think that this is amazing because there's no reason for no one to not know what's on their credit. If you need to go up here every week and pull your credit, take advantage of that because we don't know if it might go back and change, okay? So you can pull your credit reports. I tell them to get all three. 
great thing that June Carrier pointed out in his call. And this is another thing. June has been doing these credit these credit trainings for years. I was just shocked that nobody had been getting on them. But June has been doing credit repair training calls for years. And last Tuesday, he pointed out for us to stop calling them credit bureaus. They're not bureaus. They are, they are reporting agencies. When people heard bureaus, they think government, they think federal, and they get scared. These are privately owned entities, and I've been saying that since I've been doing the trainings. They are privately owned entities. They're not ran by the government. So people do not have to be scared of them. They are reporting agencies. That's all they're doing. They're reporting information from your creditors, okay? So you want to get all three reports from these three major credit reporting entities, okay? The agencies. You want to make sure that you download and save. So you're going to hit request your credit reports, and you're going to save, fill out all this information to the best of your ability. And if you're not sure how long you've been living at your address, if it's been under two years, go ahead and fill out this information, the previous address, okay? And then they are going to let you pull from all three reporting agencies, you want to download and save. You do not want to print this because when you try to print it, they will print it out and make it impossible for you to read. They will print it out on different sheets. Some of these pages can be up to 70 or 80 pages, depending on what's on your credit report. That's wasted money. That's wasted ink. Download it and save it to your computer. I like to tell people to create you a file folder. Let it say credit repair and save your credit re um, reports there, okay? So you want to print and download it and save it as a PDF to your computer. Once you get your credit reports, then you have the option of getting your FICA score. I also tell people, go ahead and set up Credit Karma. You can download Credit Karma on your phone. It's not going to hurt you. Is that a reliable place to get your FICA scores? No, it's not. They're giving you a Vantage score. You want to get your FICA scores because that's what 90% of your lenders use. The purpose of having Credit Karma on your phone is because they do give you alerts when something is added or take away from Experian, I mean, not Experian, but Equifax and um, TransUnion. But that is not a reliable place or that's not the uh, solid place to get your whole credit report because they're only showing you certain accounts. They're not going to show you your whole score and they do not show you experience. But like I say, they will give you alerts um, They let you know, hey, your score went up here or there. And also the Vantage score is sometimes 20 or 40 points more than your actual FICO score. So you absolutely don't want to use Credit Karma for what's your credit score, but it, you can have it just so you can get alerts and stuff. Never let them give you an advice on a card to get because that's their job. Credit Karma is a marketing site. They are owned by Intuit, which is TurboTax. And um, CHIP is something else that all of them are under the umbrella of Intuit. So you don't want to get any suggestions for them as far as what kind of cards to apply for either, okay? But there's nothing wrong with you having that on your phone. So again, so you can see some of your alerts. But my FICO is the best, best place to go to to get your FICO score, okay? You do have to pay. You got to put some skin in the game. You've been having bad credit for years. You're trying to avoid paying them people their money back. So you got to spend some kind of money some kind of way, okay? So again, you want to pay the $39.95 a month. I would rather for you to keep your um my credit um did my econ membership over anything. So this is optional and you do not have to get this, okay? If you want to, I suggest to some people go here, get your FICO score one time. That way you'll know what your mortgage FICO score is, your auto FICO score, because it can be up to 20, I say 14 plus uh, FICO scores, and none of them are the same. Some of them might be close, but if you want to just see what it is. Go ahead and pay for it and cancel it. You don't have to have the monthly membership, but it does give you credit monitoring. For me, that's a requirement if I work with you, but for some people, they say, hey, you don't have to have credit monitoring. I need to know what's going on when I'm taking stuff off and stuff is being added. But um, again, you do not have to keep this monthly plan, but you do want to know what your start is. You can get your... Also, you can get your FICO score from if you have a credit union, your credit card company, they would give you an average of your scores, okay? Once you get your credit report and now you got your FICO score, now you're going to do the freezing the secondary bureaus. My econ has picked three 
secondary bed rolls for you to pull, but it's actually, actually about 10 that you can actually freeze. Um, but my econ has given you the three top ones that they, they encourage you to freeze. And there are over 50 consumer reporting agencies. But again, these are not bureaus. These are reporting agencies. Well, these are the secondary bureaus, but they, they're still consumer reporting agencies. And this is who your creditors report to. So um, interesting thing on the call the other night, June pointed this out. And it has been being shared all over. I've been seeing people share it all over the internet now for the last two years. Um, it is a clause on their site that says that freeze might not prevent anyone from seeing your um, information. But I can say I've had my freeze in place since 2011. I've never had to take my freeze off. I haven't had a problem um, with my freeze. But again, this is a good strategy to use, okay? But like June said on the call, it is a great area there when you go to their website, okay? Right here, you want to click on the link. It's right here. Also, the telephone numbers are here. I had a few of my econ associates asking me about different things with the secondary bureaus. They are consumer friendly. I love that my econ placed the telephone number here. Call them up, you guys. They're not, they're not like the secondary uh, credit reporting agencies. They won't give you to spin around the block. They won't have you on hold for a long time or take you through a lot of hoops. They will answer the phone for you. If you tell them that you haven't had your freeze, um, you wasn't able to get your freeze done, or you received a letter because someone had received the letter saying they needed more information from them, then they will tell you in detail exactly what they're requesting, okay? But you can click right on their link. It's going to take you right to their website. Also, pull your credit reports from these secondary reporting agencies. That's another thing that June has suggested for my econ associates to do. That's something that I've always had my clients do. Pull your credit reports from these secondary reporting agencies, okay? You want to pay add a freeze. You are the consumer. You're not a third party agency, and you want to hit agree. So hit continue. You're going to fill this out, and over here they're going to ask you to upload some information to protect your identity. Because yes, identity theft is one of the fastest crimes that's happening um, um, in America. So you, everybody on this call, hopefully you have the identity theft. I believe my econ has the best identity ID defender protection program and it's the most affordable to me um, so everyone should have that and like we like to say here at too smart you should order your ID defender from the person who brought you into the company that's given back to your upline okay so you should get with your upline get their link uh, and get your ID defender signed up under them also sell that ID defender as an individual product I I promote it all day and I have people sign up because again, identity theft is major, okay? So you wanna upload these documents and it's for proof of your identity. If you have an ID that does not have the address on it and it tells you right here, because they understand some people IDs are not updated with the current address, then they tell you if your driver's license does not show your current address, please include a utility bill. They need something that is uh, reliable with your uh, mailing address. It cannot be marketing material, okay? I always tell people upload that social security card. Those are the, gonna be the three things that you're gonna need throughout the credit repair process. If you mail in dispute letters, or identity letters, or any kind of letters to the credit bureau, uh, credit agencies, reporting agencies, and you only mail in your ID, or you only mail in your social, they're gonna send you back a letter. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna use that whole 35 to 45 days, 35 to 45 days. During COVID, they was allowed 60 days, but they are gonna make you wait that whole time just to send you a letter or a postcard saying they need more information to prove your identity. Do not allow them to launch stroke your process because a person would get discouraged. I've been waiting all this time just for them to tell me we don't have no quitting us in my econ. We got the best system. We get the best trainings. So we're going to follow the system and follow the directions. Mail in our ID your social security card, and a utility bill. If you do not have a utility bill coming to your name at the address you're at, then you want to mail in a copy of your car registration. If you don't have a car, check stub. If you don't, get a, if you don't have a job, your bank statement. 
you need to mail them something that shows proof of your address so that this will not slow up the process. Okay, you guys? So they're asking for you to upload these documents. Once you upload these documents, they are going to process your information and they are going to send you in the mail within a week or two your personal identification pin. You just want to open the letter up, see that your freeze is in place, and you see your pen. I tell people, put that letter back in the same envelope and keep it in a safe place. If you lose this envelope, you absolutely can call the 800 number and they will send you a new pen out. Or they might give it to you over the phone. They just need to go over some security questions, okay? But this process is not hard. I tell people, you can do this while we're doing the training. You can go right up here and do this while you're doing the training. Take your phone out. Take a picture of your ID and your social side by side, a piece of that verifiable mail. You can lay all three together, upload it to your computer. Now it's on your file folder on your computer. Go right in, click on this. This takes less than five minutes, you guys, okay? You want to go to Enovis. Enovis does not require for you to do any identification or proof of identity, okay? So you want to scroll down and find security freeze. Click on security freeze. You're going to request it online, and you're going to fill out all of this information. If you've been a victim of identity theft, you can say yes or no. I believe everybody on this call has been because of the breaches that has happened with almost hospital, T-Mobile, Equifax. Everybody seemed like they was having breaches during COVID. So we all have probably been a victim of identity theft. The only thing that I tell people, if you say yes, they might send you a letter asking for more. I've seen that happen once or twice when someone said that. You can say no, and there is a site that you can go to, and I take you that is in your my credit system where you can file for identity theft, okay? You can file a complaint about it. But you want to fill out this information, and then um, just hit submit, same process. In a week or two, they're gonna send you your identity, um, your security freeze pin, okay? The last one is Lexis Net. Oh, well, wait, we got Enivis. And last one is Lexis Nexis. Lexis Nexis was the largest uh, secondary reporting agency. They are gonna ask you for to upload some documents as well. So you're gonna hit request security freeze, request their freeze online. And they're going to ask you to um, upload those documents as well for proof of identity. Okay. And it takes it takes less than ten minutes, you guys, to do this process. Like it takes less than ten minutes to do this process. Sage Screen was recently bought out by Lexis Nexus. Um, I see a lot of people online still saying Core Logics. Core Logics, the department closed down back in October during COVID. Um, I had a person on my team who received a letter from CoreLogic saying that they was going to no longer uh, provide a security freeze. I called June and um, he was like, let him look into it. I called CoreLogic and the lady said that they came in and that department was shut down. So um, CoreLogic is no longer required. So again, a lot of stuff people are sharing on that internet you cannot trust. So I get very irritated when people from our team or our my e or my econ come and ask us about stuff that they're seeing with this these people so called gurus on the internet. Y'all have the best system. Y'all get the best credit trainings. Just get on the trainings, okay? Everything you need is right here. The secondary this list of consumer reporting agencies you want to download this. Open it up and read it. It's from the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This is a bureau. These are the people who keep their foot on the credit reporting agency's net. When I say keep their foot on their net, at, um, Equifax just was uh, fine. TransUnion was fine. $2 million for hurting people when it came to renting. Like they keep their foot because people are constantly reporting um, and, um, you know, filing complaints against them. So you want to download this information. Great information to read. It'll help you understand what secondary agency is reporting what to who. Okay. Again, reading is like, Read this information, it'll empower you. It, it teaches so much. So now you're on step number three, which is checking for errors on your credit report. Um, normally, no, most people do not know how to read their credit reports, but we have the instructions in here to help you know how to read your credit reports. So anything that is incorrect on your credit report for identity, 
your wrong name, the misspelling of your birthday, I mean, misspelling of your name, the incorrect birthday, um, anything that's on your credit report, you want to highlight or you want to keep a journal. You want to keep a journal, okay? Make note, make note of what is incorrect on Equifax, What's on TransUnion? I have I always tell people you should have three sheets. You should have three pieces of paper, and each one of those papers should have each credit bureau and what information up there is incorrect that you need to change. Okay, because all of the credit bureaus are not going to say the same thing. So download this information and read it. Okay, and watch that video. Now you're ready to start a dispute process. Okay, you're going to hit the create a dispute letter. This system has everything for you. I tell people we have a library of great letters, so you don't have to try to figure out the verbiage. So when you speak to someone about joining my e-card and they reach out to you for credit repair, you have to make them feel good about this process. We have a library of letters, amazing letters that get effective results, okay? So once they enter their information in, they set up their profile, I give them a preview of the letters. I let them see the different fonts, because we're trying to get the e-Oscar attention, okay? Our letters have the Fair Credit Reporting Act laws up here. The credit bureaus know exactly what these laws mean. You are not required to know these laws, but if you do want to know them, you are absolutely welcome to go and order the book that has the Fair Credit Reporting Act laws. But again, we're not trying to make you credit repair specialists. If you choose to do that, that's a whole different training that costs some money. <laughs> but we are making you aware that you are sending some effective letters off, okay? These letters have the laws on it. The credit bureaus know exactly what these laws mean, okay? Well, our letters are not saying it does not belong to me. I used to be with a company that sent people letters like that. They said, this does not belong to me. It looked like something a 10-year-old typed up, and I couldn't believe it. My econ is giving y'all some amazing letters. These letters are asking them to do their investigation to determine whether a disputed information is inaccurate and record the current status of the disputed information or delete the item from the file, straight to the point, before the end of the 30-day period beginning the date that you received this notice. You have to keep a, a um, journal also of the date that you send the letter off. It's important for you to keep up with this stuff because the credit bureaus are not going to do it. So you want to make sure that you are on top of your game as far as keeping a timeline, understanding, okay, I melt this letter off on the 15th. They got such and such days that I should hear back from them. If not, they have missed the 30 days. They have to remove it from your credit report, okay? We're asking them for verifiable proof. Proof. This proof should go beyond, it should be hard evidence that goes way back to the original creditor. Not verification from a third-party database, okay? So again, we're asking them to show you proof of how you owe this debt. You want to sign it with your wet signature. You never want to type your name on the letter. Your wet signature, again, is something that's going to get the E-Oscars system, okay, um, attention, so that your letter will land in the hands of a real person, okay? We have your verification dispute letter. We have your method of um, verification um, dispute letter. We have your identity letter. That's the first letter that you should mail off is the identity letter. So. After you did your freeze, the first letter should be your identity letter. Now, you do not have to send this letter off. You can actually, this is the one time that I tell people they can call the credit bureaus and you can dispute this online. Speed the process up. You can absolutely call the credit bureaus and ask them about removing incorrect identification information off your credit report. You just have to be careful with the verbiage because they're going to ask you because they have a way of asking you about an address, and you can't say, oh, I used to stay there, but I don't stay there no more. You have just said that that address belongs to you. So do not get on that call and give them too much information. And if you think you're the type that might overspill sometimes, then just go online, and you can actually dispute your identity, um, identity part online. I can say some sites, when you go online, that they say that address is attached to a open account, they're not going to allow you to remove it. So make sure that your stuff is updated. That's why I say it's important to make sure that your ID is updated with your current address. We are all grown adults. We should be walking around with our addresses correct on our ID. And I, I'm telling you guys, I see a lot of people don't think about this stuff until tax time. I'd be shocked that they wait a whole year 
that they want an income tax check and their stuff is not updated. I'm looking like, okay, we got to get, we got to do better. So make sure that your ID is correct. If your ID does have an address up there, because some people choose not to give their addresses out to, for whatever reason, they like to use mama address has been in her house for 80 years. There's nothing wrong with that. But you have to have something that shows your new address, okay, in order for this process to be uh, speed, you know, as, as speedy and as fast as possible, okay? So make sure when you call them, do not say I used to live at that address because you've now attached yourself to that old address. Just let the credit bureaus know these are the addresses that I need removed. Make sure you have your credit report in front of you pulled up and let them know this is the one address that should be up there. Make sure that your name is correct on your credit report. You do not need multiple spellings of your name, okay? There's a risk to a lender. Sometimes a lot of people wonder why they can't get funding for businesses or lending um, institutions from bank, you know, loans from banks and stuff. It's, it's like you're using multiple alias. So you want to have one name on your credit report. Okay, so that's very important. If you choose to do the letters, you can absolutely use these letters. The system will create the letter for you. This letter does not need to be notarized. If it's, it's up to you, if you want to save it to your log history, okay? That's the first letter. Once you get that identity part straight, now you can move on to disputing items off of your credit report. Do not skip the process, you guys, because a lot of times those old addresses is attached to accounts that you're trying to remove. And that's how they're saying we can verify that you owe that debt, okay? You got the method of verification. You got the F, um, violation of your FCRA rights, the intent to litigate. I tell people don't go as far as telling those people you're going to take them to court if you know you owe that. It's very important. Some accounts are not going to come off with these letters. Some creditors are going to fight you back. If you know you owe those people your money or their money, because you got the loan, you got the credit card, you use the, the finance. If you know you owe those people the money, then pay them people. Just, just pay the debt. Because a lot of times you have creditors that will fight you tooth and nail. Navy Federal is my credit union. If you choose to dispute them on your credit report, you can never, ever come back to their credit union. So it's certain things that for certain situations, for certain people, that is different, okay? But most of the times, I haven't had a problem when I sent off the verification dispute letter or the, um, yeah, the verification of dispute letter, I haven't had to resort to a second or a third letter, okay? And again, you want to make sure that your signature is on that letter. You want to make sure that the account numbers match what's on the credit report, the account names match what's on the credit report. If you have more than six creditors, just hit that button, and it's going to give you uh, six more, so you can dispute a total of 12 at a time. Make sure this is notarized. It's very important that that's notarized. And when you send it off, you want to send it off certified mail. Keep copies of everything, okay? That's very important. Then once you do that, we have a video here that tells you why you should never dispute online. Again, that does not pertain to your identity part. This is a video showing you exactly how to mail the letter off. I love that June put this in here because it shows you walking through that post office door, exactly what form you need to fill out for the uh, mailing it certified mail. Here is all the addresses. Do not Google an address because there are different departments. You want to make sure that the letter goes to the correct department. Here are the letters that, they, that you can actually download the letters. Um, from what I was told, this will not be in a system soon. Once they do an upgrade, they might take this out. But you can download these letters and change the verbiage if you choose to. The one that I usually use the most where I change the verbiage is the identity dispute letter when I was mailing the letters off. Because sometimes they want you to go through, like I say, they want you to tell them, there's 27 addresses on your credit report. You're going to have to go through those addresses and tell them what you want removed off, okay? That's just the best way to get it done. So here's the letters. Um, the goodwill letter is for if you have ever need to remove a late payment on a open account. I've had a lot of people ask me about removing late payments or closed accounts. If it's a closed account, you don't need to worry about removing a late payment. You just need to get the account off. But a goodwill letters is if it's an open account, your mortgage or your car payment or whatever, and life happened, you fell behind and missed the payment. That late payment hurt your score up to 100 points. You want to use this goodwill letter. This letter is going directly to the creditor and not 
the credit reporting agencies, okay? You'll call your creditor up. I was able to fast this in for a young lady on my team. Me and her did it. We called up her mortgage company. They gave her the person who was in charge of her mortgage account. That person was very pleasant and said, absolutely, we, you've been with us for years. You can fax this to me, attention it to me, and they removed that late payment off of her credit report. And that was golden. She loved it. So when they see results like that, they know that we're giving them great information. Pay to delete. If you have already spoken to a creditor and you've already agreed that you owe the debt and any type of acknowledgement, when you pick that phone up and you said, this is she, yeah, I owe that debt, what can I do to pay you? Then you have done a pay to delete. If you pay the creditor, don't mean that they're going to remove it. You need this letter. Negotiate. You need to know who you're speaking to. You need an email from them saying that they're going to remove it. That's very important. Send this letter to them. They need to send you something back and write and send it. It's going to be deleted, and that's going to be taken off of your credit report. Here are some medical letters. And, of course, if you don't hear from them, here's the 30-day no response letter. You want to make sure that you're sending these letters off, you guys, because if you ever decide to go to the CFPB and file a complaint, they are going to want you to show that you followed the proper steps. Here's how you can file a complaint against the credit bureaus. But they want to know that they was given the same opportunity that you are given. The credit bureaus have 30 days, have 35 days to comply with your request. So you can't just go up here and say, hey, I want to file a complaint, and I don't, but I didn't do any of the proper channels or I didn't follow the proper steps. And that's why our my credit system is amazing because our system saves the letters. And I love this as well. All of your letters that you print out is here saved in your log history. So you can show proof that you actually sent those letters off, okay? But it's very important, you can go here and file a complaint against them. And you will get your stuff off if you did exactly what you were supposed to do, okay? Um, what else? So we also teach you how to build credit. This is something that you can't teach anyone to do. Credit utilization. And I tell people this, this is very important. I tell people, you cannot pay me to do your credit utilization. I have a lady right now who I helped get a credit score over 750. She went out there and messed it up because that's what they do. When people don't do it themselves, they do not appreciate the process. She went right back out there and ran and got her credit messed up. And here she go a year or two later, Ms. Britt, I need your help again. So I looked at her credit report and I said, you do not need credit repair. You need to pay down your debt. You have credit cards out the yin yang. You just need to pay down your debt. Is there some things up there, here and there that I probably could do? Yes. But her biggest problem is utilization. She can't pay me to do that. And I told her, I don't want to take your money. I could easily take your money. But I'm not the type of person I have to answer to God. Ma'am, you just need to pay down your credit cards. Your utilization is high. You cannot pay people to do this part, no matter who you get to do your credit. The credit utilization counts towards 30% of your credit score. And if you have credit cards, the goal is have them below 10%. 8% is golden, but 10% is good. If you can say under 30%, that's good as well. But we teach you about utilization. And also credit building. Here's a couple of suggestions. If you are in a credit union, um, the one I'm in, they offer a credit loan builder program. So um, if you are in a credit union and you can refer people and tell people about their program or here's two right here. I can tell you with self, if you miss a payment with self, because I have a client who changed credit cards and self could not pull her $25 a month, they do report late to the credit bureaus. It's nothing to play with. If you are focused on your credit, you got to be dedicated and serious. And I told her when she changed cards, she should have called self because that 30 days hurt her. So now we're trying to convince self to remove that 30-day reporting off of the credit bureaus. Um, and they'll do it. But again, you don't want that. So these are the credit loan builder programs. These are giving you positive trade lines on your credit report. They will report monthly, every month that you're paying on time. It will build your credit. Here are some suggestions for some cards that we tell you about. And also, if you're renting and you are paying rent, you can use Rental Karma to have you build, help build your credit as well. And it's under 25 minutes, and people will love you for telling them about this program. 
I am finished with my training, you guys. Thank you.